less than 500 subscribers. Hello, my name is Chris. I'm a doctor, athlete, and digital creator based in Australia. I'm not in Australia at the moment because I've taken a year off work to travel the world to learn how to live a healthier and happier life. And one thing that I've come to realize that has made me very happy is actually this YouTube channel. I see this topic's kind of trending on YouTube at the moment with other small creators making this kind of video and they've really been resonating with me. So I thought I'd take the time to do the same. So why did YouTube start changing my life when I had less than 500 subscribers? Firstly, I think I need to preface this video and explain how difficult it was for me to actually start a YouTube channel. I think a lot of people who are drawn to creating on YouTube are actually very introverted, myself included. I was always labeled the quiet kid at school, the guy who never talked. Every single teacher that would write a report card for me, it was always, he's a good student, but he doesn't talk enough. And I had that my whole life growing up. But at the same time, I also always loved YouTube. And I knew at some point that I wanted to become a creator myself. So about four years ago now, I created my first video and uploaded it to YouTube. It was a huge mental barrier for me to overcome. And my way of dealing with that anxiety and stress of people seeing it is that I didn't tell anyone. In fact, I didn't tell anyone about my YouTube channel for three years. The only people that saw my videos were random internet strangers. And I found that a lot easier to deal with than knowing that people in real life are watching my videos. So I think three years in, I eventually told my dad that I had a YouTube channel and I showed him some of my videos. He wasn't too fussed. He thought, oh, that's cool. He wasn't that bothered. And, but I had built this up in my head as some big scary thing that I didn't want anyone to know about. Fast forward to today and basically everyone that knows me knows that I have a YouTube channel. They know that I have TikTok, Instagram, and make videos. And I'm no longer embarrassed or self-conscious about putting videos out there. Like I still get slightly uncomfortable, but I know it's something that I really wanna do. So I continuously push myself to do it. I do it for this reason. I was actually listening to a podcast recently. It's an old podcast, but it's Tim Ferriss and Casey Neistat, I think from maybe about 10 years ago. And I was just curious as to what Casey Neistat, the king of vlogging, you've probably heard of him if you're on YouTube, what he thinks and how he approaches his filmmaking. But Tim Ferriss asked him a question, which was, why do you do filmmaking? And Casey answered, he thought it was because as a child, he never felt like he was really listened to. He never had a voice. But filmmaking was like giving him a loudspeaker and he could express himself however he wanted. I don't think Casey Neistat's an introvert at all, but I think a lot of introverted people are benefiting from YouTube because it is a loudspeaker. It is a way for People are usually more quiet, more reflective, more inside their head to express themselves. And I think we live in the perfect age for introverts. So making videos is one of the best ways for someone who doesn't usually like to communicate with loads of people in real life. They can communicate in, with loads of people online instead. And that's the beauty of YouTube. And I don't think I'm alone in feeling like this. I know that a lot of introverted people like me have plenty of things to say. They're just not able to be heard in their day-to-day -day life. So if you're an introvert, take advantage of the internet age and express yourself. It's honestly one of the best things that I've done for myself and you can potentially do for yourself too. Is he drying up there? Besides a massive loudspeaker for me to express my thoughts, ideas and creativity, YouTube has given me so much else as well. Firstly, as a medical doctor, I've come to realize you don't get to use your creative side of your brain at all. You essentially are learning algorithms, learning guidelines when you see a patient. There's no thinking outside of the box. It's all just following rules and doing the same thing over and over. Essentially, you have to be a really good memorization robot and have a little bit of empathy in there too but there's actually not much room for creativity this youtube channel for the first time in probably about 10 years or so since high school it's given me an opportunity to express my creative side and not only express my creative side it's allowed me to explore and pursue different interests of mine that i didn't really know that i had for example filmmaking videography writing storytelling and communication skills. And then all my topics as well, which I discuss, I have to thoroughly research them because I don't want to make a fool of myself in front of 
thousands of people. And YouTube will always be my preferred platform. Despite all the success I've gained on TikTok or Facebook, not so much on Instagram, YouTube will always be my preferred platform. I'll try and explain why. Firstly, if you just think about it, when you spend an hour on Instagram or TikTok versus an hour on YouTube, notice how you feel. For me personally, after an hour on YouTube, I feel like I've learned something. I feel like I've connected and grown. However, when I've spent an hour on Instagram or TikTok, I just feel drained, like all my energy is gone and I've just kind of wasted my time. And actually when my TikTok channel was blowing up, I had lots of companies messaging me wanting to do sponsorships and stuff. I had one brand manager reach out to me just to have a quick consultation call. And it was free and I was curious, so I just did the call. It was actually really eye-opening. He basically told me that in general, people will go onto Instagram and TikTok to consume content. Whereas when people go on YouTube, they go to see their favorite creator. But for me at the moment, I'm really enjoying Gork's Art um, and Ali Abdal. They're my two favorite YouTubers at the moment. And YouTube's less about jumping on trends and trying to get as many dopamine hits as possible. And I think this YouTuber, Darren Naylor, completely nailed it, pun intended, when he described the difference between YouTube and Instagram and TikTok. I got into a really unhealthy habit on Instagram or TikTok where I would get videos with a lot of views. I have multiple with like the hundreds of thousands. But the problem with that was those videos were created for the sole purpose of like, I want these to do well. You know what I mean? I want this video to go viral. I want this video to hit. And I understand the importance and the benefit of that happening, but I was never really creating things that I was interested in. And yeah, I'm super aware that my progress on YouTube has been very slow. Over four years of doing this, I'm now on, I think, 1.4K subscribers, which I think is amazing. But I'm more than happy to grow slowly on YouTube. I came up with a little metaphor, a little story to help you understand why. So there's two stories. In the first story, there's a young boy. He goes to the sh his favorite sneaker store, shoe store, sees a pair of shoes that he loves. And they're quite expensive. So he goes home and he asks his mum for some money. His mum says, Oh yeah, sure, here's the money, you can buy them. And he's got the sneakers. End of story. In the second story, there's a young boy, sees these amazing sneakers, but they're too expensive, he can't afford them. But he really wants his sneakers, so he goes home and he asks his mum, can I have some money for these sneakers? And she says, no, those sneakers look ridiculous, they look like clown shoes, you can't have the money. If you want those shoes, you're gonna to have to earn them yourself. So the only way he's gonna be able to get these shoes is to get a job. So he finds a job, waiting tables, and the money is coming in slowly, but it's not enough. So he has to work on his communication skills. He has to be better with the customers, so he gets tips more. And then through getting more tips, he works his way up to manager and he gets even more money. And eventually, with enough time, with enough struggle, with enough strife, he ends up saving enough money and buying the shoes. I think you can kind of get where I'm going with this story, but essentially, if something's just given to you, you don't have to work for it, you don't value it. Any movie you've ever watched, any story you've ever read, the audience always wants to see the character going through some struggle or strife before ultimately succeeding. And I actually revel in the struggle and strife. Obviously, I don't wanna be a crappy small YouTuber for the rest of my life, but I'm reveling in these days where I'm still learning, I'm still growing, because it's all part of the character transformation. So if you're a small YouTuber and you're not growing, don't feel disheartened. You're just in the best bit of the story. And if you haven't started YouTube yet and you're on the fence about starting it, please consider all the other transferable skills. Please consider how much you'll grow by putting yourself out there and starting to make videos for YouTube. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. I need to go explore this Thai lagoon. And as usual, keep training, keep living, peace.